Hey there, Chris here. So I've already made two videos just on reflections and I will link them in the info cards and in the description. Both of them are specifically made in and for cycles and the last video was about creating a, I think, rather good looking reflection catcher. In this video we will use the same concept and create a reflection catcher in Eevee. So let's get going. So this is the scene from the last tutorial. Instead of the sphere, I have a blue monkey head here. Remember we have those three scenes, the all, which is this one, then the reflection mat, which just renders out where we want reflections. And you notice here that I have um, plugged in the emission directly into the material output. In the last video, I showed you this setup where um, we make the monkey head transparent and just mask out the reflections. But for uh, this monkey head, I found that it actually looks better to have the monkey head masked out too, which gives us a better look down here where we have those contact points uh, of the monkey head and the ground plane. And then of course we can put our uh, monkey with the reflection on any background, but just to keep things uh, consistent, I render a new background here in this scene, new stage. So now let's go to all and switch everything over to Eevee because that's what we're here for. So first thing we notice we don't have any reflections so we have to switch on screen space reflections and I go in here and set the film alpha to transparent as well. So all of this here where we can see the environment texture will be transparent in the rendering. Now we get these, re these reflections. Uh, these are the default screen space reflections and I think they really don't look very nice at all. Um, there is a way around this though. Uh, in Eevee we have to add, or in, we can add a so-called reflection plane, which is a light probe. And this reflection plane, let me just go to top view, scale it up and rotate it just so that it's basically the same as our ground plane. Go back to camera view and now GC and I have to move it up so that it's just a little bit above the, the actual ground plane. And what we get is this like perfect mirror reflection here. Okay, and what happens when we render this is Eevee uses this reflection plane. This is sort of a helper object to make better looking reflections in the rendering. In the viewport here, it always looks like a perfect mirror. So if we don't want that, we could hide the reflection plane. Then we get our real uh, ground plane visible here with the not very nice reflections. But if we give this a render, then we will have better looking reflections. Before I do that, I go over to the reflection mat, switch this to EV and transparent as well. And also to the new stage, switch this over to EV and transparent. You can already tell here what I'm doing. Each scene can have its own world setting uh, assigned to it and its own render engine. So if we have the three scenes, we have to switch all three scenes over to Eevee. Otherwise, we would render one scene with cycles and another with Eevee. Okay, now back to the all and I'm gonna save it quick and hit F12 and look what that looks like. And we can go to the compositor and look at this rendering and you can see here we have way better looking reflections than what we get here. Here right under the monkey we don't have any reflections but with the reflection plane with that light probe in there the reflections look much nicer. Here we have this sort of fake fall off and if we go back here we can go into the screen space reflection settings here and we have this edge fading. Now if I turn that all the way off and render and come over here, then you can see that we have almost none of that fall off, but we still get some fall off here. Uh, and if we 
go back here and we turn that like to 0.3, then we get much more of that fall off. See, right here we have more of this fading out effect. Um, of course, this is not really physically based correct ray tracing. This is sort of a fake fall off happening here. I think I'm just going to use it this way. Um, Okay, so this is that scene done. Now let's go to the reflection mat. Uh, we have no reflections happening here. So again, we have to go in here, enable uh, screen space reflections. And also bring that reflection plane. Oh, you know what? I have to move that to the stage collection here. Reflection plane and now in the reflection matte scene we have reflections but i don't want any of these environment lights so I, in this world setting remember this uh, reflection matte scene uses its own world settings we can simply turn off the environment texture and then the new stage also uses this world and we go in here maybe change this material a little make it look more interesting this back here maybe and in uh, cycles we have a blue lamp but here in EV we have to change the color over here so we make this blue maybe turn up the radius a little so we get a, a reflection here and this material like I said maybe change it a little um, to something like this. Okay, so this is going to be our new ground plane that we want to put the monkey and the reflection on. This is the monkey. This is the reflection mat. Now we go to the all scene because this is where we have all of this set up in the compositor from the last tutorial. Save, hit F12. Let's see what we get. Okay, so this is the monkey rendered out. Okay, we do not have any uh, special passes here in EV. So we, we don't have a crypto mat pass. We don't have a glossy indirect pass. None of that stuff that we used in the last tutorial. So in fact, I can remove this crypto mat node right here. Uh, all we have is this rendering here. Then down here we have our mask for the sh for the reflections. And by looking at this, we can really dial in the luminance key for cutting out the reflections down here. And then remember we have those erode nodes, and we have a gradient here and mix it all together and then we layer that on top of our new ground plane so if we look at this we need to mask out the reflections now we don't have a glossy indirect pass like i said so we're just gonna use our regular rendering here and mask the reflections out of that so I plug in this image into here maybe mute this for now so and also I'm gonna mute this let's see what that looks like on just a transparent background okay so now we are masking out our reflection down here and that's what it looks like but, of course, we have to put our monkey head on top of each other. So if we put this onto our new ground plane, which is this image here and here. Okay, so we have reflections on the new ground plane. This dodge node, I explained that in the last video as well. This is just to change uh, the color a little bit from this more orangey original reflection that we had here 
to a more pinkish one on our new ground plane to look like this. It's not necessary, but you can uh, you can play with that a little. So, okay. And now we have to put the monkey head on top of all of this, but we don't have a clean cut out monkey head. Uh, we also don't get any uh, cryptomat pass here in Eevee or even an object ID pass that we could use to uh, cut out the monkey head. So instead, I'm just gonna create a new scene uh, based on our all scene. So linked copy and call this monkey and then um, view layer exclude our ground plane. So we just have the monkey. This is set to transparent, right? So this is going to work, I think. Now let's come back in here, duplicate this node and use the monkey here, use all here. Oh, I'm in the wrong. I wanna be in the all scene here because that's where I have uh, this set up. Okay, and for this, we're just gonna use the monkey. Now, of course, I have to hit F12 and render everything. Ah, there it was. The monkey. So now we have the monkey and we put the monkey on top of everything with this final alpha overnode. And then we have this new completed scene where we put the monkey and its reflections onto this new ground plane and that's basically it we have a reflection catcher in Eevee okay now after three videos on reflections the main takeaway can be summarized uh, like this we can create different scenes and view layers up here one scene can contain completely different objects than another th scene but also reuse or link the same objects a scene is hooked up to world settings so yes, we can have multiple different worlds and assign them to scenes. For example, in one world we use an HDRI environment light and in another world we don't. One of the most important features is the ability to exclude collections from view layers inside of scenes. And that is what we use to either include or exclude certain objects or lights for different render layers in the compositor. Now, in my opinion, the usability here is currently pretty horrible, but hopefully this will improve in the future. And finally, the compositor is where we modify rendered images, create masks, and layer everything on top of each other for our final image. This blend file, just like many other blend files of previous tutorials, can be downloaded by all silver monkeys from my brand new Patreon page. And let me just also plug the gold monkey tier where you get free access to all current and future realistic material packs for EV and cycles. So please do check that out at patreon.com slash crispy. If you like this video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos in here. That's it for this one. Have a wonderful day. See you soon. Bye bye.